Hello and welcome back to the channel. Yesterday I posted a unboxing and setup of this uh, little uh, Tapo TP-Link C200 camera. Uh, and of course one of the first questions you guys had was will it work with Home Assistant? So today we're going to take a look at that. I'm going to leave a card up in the corner here to my review video from yesterday and I'll also leave a link to it down in the description. Let's get started. Okay, to get this little camera working in Home Assistant has actually been a fairly straightforward task. Uh, TP-Link, uh, I have a, a website uh, that we'll, we'll maybe have a quick look at uh, in a few minutes that kind of helps you along the road um, of, of setting up this, de this device within third-party apps. And I think that's really good that TP-Link have done that. Yes, they have their own app that we've seen in yesterday's video. Um, is is very good. Uh, it's very intuitive and it has lots of features. But they do also allow you to use the, this product in third-party apps. So I think hats off to TP-Link for doing that. The camera supports uh, at least two that I could uh, figure out. Um, uh, at least two protocols for streaming the, the video feed from it. Uh, the first one, and the one that we're going to use, is called RTSP. Um, RTSP is the first one that I tried to use, and I got that working successfully. The other protocol is called ONVIFS, O-N-V-I-F, ONVIFS. Um, and that's kind of the industry standard um, protocol that a lot of network attached and IP cameras use. Uh, you can use that protocol with this camera as well. I haven't tried that yet because I haven't had to. Um, but if there is a demand for trying to get this to work with uh, on VIFs, then uh, let me know in the description and I can uh, try and figure that out and make a video about it. But in order to get this uh, up and running within Home Assistant, the first thing we have to do is set up a username and password uh, for the live stream for the camera and we do that in the TP-Link app that we looked at yesterday. Okay, in the app we are going to head for the camera and then click on the gear at the top for the settings and then advanced settings and then camera account and in here we're going to input a username and password and then press save. I'm going to go back to the first page as well and open the top option and make a note of the IP address of the camera. Okay, so now here we are in Home Assistant. Now you may well have noticed that this is a, a clean, fresh install of Home Assistant. I'm going to be doing that from now on in my videos. When we start a new project, we'll start with a new install. A um, couple of reasons for that. The first is that means I've got the most up-to-date version of Home Assistant when I'm doing the tutorial. So hopefully it'll stay up-to-date for longer. And the second reason is the more that you add to Home Assistant, the more complex it, it at least looks. Sometimes the more complex it is, especially if you've got entities with similar names and so on. Um, so just to keep things as simple as possible and that so it's as easy as possible for a beginner to follow along, we're going to have fresh installs each time. Now, of course, during some tutorials, I might dip into my install of Home Assistant to show various things. But in the main, we will just use a fresh install. So the first thing we want to do to get our camera set up in Home Assistant is we need to find out what our RTSP live stream feed is. And there's a website that I found um, on, well, it's a support page, one of the TP-Link support pages, and I'll leave a link for this down in the description as well. And this page tells us how we can configure our, our URL so we can view the live stream from our TAPO camera. So we can see here that we have the 1080p camera. So this would be our live stream here, replacing username with the username we set up and password with the password we set up in the app. And then the IP address with the IP address that's been given to our camera. So before we start going and setting up things in Home Assistant, what I'd recommend is using VLC player now, if you don't have VLC player, again, I will leave a link in the description where you can download this from. 
I'd recommend viewing the camera feed in here first. By doing that, we're confirming that everything's working. You know, our camera is, um, is, is, is serving that footage and we can access it with our URL. Once we start putting it into Home Assistant, things get a bit more complicated and it will be, it will be harder to troubleshoot a problem with the camera. Uh, whereas if we know the camera's working, Home Assistant's not playing, we know it's a problem with our Home Assistant. Um, so in order to test it in VLC Player, we'll go ahead and click on Media and then Open Network Stream. And then here we're going to go RTSP, colon, forward slash, forward slash. Then the next thing you're going to put in is the username that you set uh, in the app. So mine was Lee's Tech Channel. Next we're going to do a colon, and then we're going to put the password that we set up in the app. So mine was password1. Not a password I'd recommend, but I don't really want to show you all the passwords that I regularly use, so that's what we're going for here. And we're going to go at, and then our IP address. So in my case, that was 192.168.1.237. Call on again, and then the port, the default port is 554, forward slash, stream, one. Nice and easy to remember, eh? Okay, once we've entered all that, we're going to go ahead and click play. And hopefully, yeah, here we go, we get the live camera feed. Okay, and this is live, we'll wave in front of the camera here. Okay. So, we know that our live camera feed is working. So the next thing we can do is try and get this up and running in Home Assistant. So I'm going to... Okay, so here we are back in Home Assistant. Um, and what we want to do next is we want to navigate to our configuration.yaml file. Now there's a few ways to do this. If you're new to Home Assistant, I do have some videos about different ways to get into your configuration.yaml file. Uh, again, I'll try and leave a card and I'll leave links in the description. Um, my preferred method is to use the Samba share. So we get it uh, on, our, on our network here in our file explorer. So we're going to go ahead and open up our configuration.yaml file. Again, if you feel like I'm speeding through this bit and you need more information, go and watch my other videos on this. And I'm going to edit it with Notepad++. Okay, and we'll expand this. Okay, so we want to add our camera into our configuration file here. So we're going to head and put camera. That's not how you spell camera. Okay, and we call on there as well. Okay, next we want to put platform. And the platform we're going to use here is called FFMPEG. And then we want name. I can't type today for some reason. Okay, so we want to give our device a name. So here I'm just going to put Tapo C200. And then next we're going to go input. And then the input is that same URL as we had earlier. Now, to save me typing all that out again. and make sure that we get it right. No, it hasn't saved it. Okay, we're just gonna have to type it out again. So, RTSP, forward slash, forward slash. Lee's Tech. Lee's Tech Channel, and then it was password one at 192.168.1.237 and port 554 and stream one. I'm just gonna make sure I've got that right. I have got it written down in front of me here. So RTSP. 
Okay, that looks good. So we're going to go ahead and save our configuration.yaml file like so and jump back over to Home Assistant, configuration and scroll down to server controls and we're just going to restart our server here and that will just take a minute to restart so let's cut the video here and we'll come back once it's restarted. Okay so this has now restarted so we're going to go back and click on overview and then in the top corner here we're going to click configure UI and we're going to add in here a picture entity and we're going to choose an entity to be our camera and our image path I'm just going to delete this you can see that the feed from the camera has now come up in the square there so our name again I'm just going to name it uh, Tapo C200 I'm not going to show the name or the state on the camera here because I think it looks cleaner without them. I'm going to go ahead and click save. You can see it's appeared down here. I'm actually just going to move it up to the top so it's easier for us to see. And we're going to close out of that. Now you can see here that the camera feed is on Home Assistant but you can see by looking at the timer in the top corner here this is actually not a live feed. What's happening here is that every 10 seconds, or 10 seconds or so, the camera is taking a snapshot and then showing that on the screen. So this is not uh, a live feed, which is not what some people might want. So in order to get around this, what we can do is go back to our three little dots here and configure UI and then click again and raw edit configurer. And then here we've got the information for our camera. So just before it moves on to the weather entity, we're just going to add some lines here. So our first one is camera underscore image. Uh, call on. And then we're just going to put the name, the, the entity name of the camera again. So camera dot tapo underscore C200. So I'm just copying what was already there. And we're going to come down one and go camera underscore view colon live. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save that. Come out of here. Come out of here. And now you can see that back on our overview this timer is now counting down in real time so if I wave in front of the camera there is a little bit of a delay um, between me waving in front of the camera and me stopping waving in front of the camera I think it's probably about I don't know like two seconds or something like that of a delay between me doing something and it actually showing up uh, that delay on the camera app is probably about half a second to a second so there is a little bit of a delay with this, but you know that's kind of uh, to be expected. You know we're using third-party uh, application for this camera. Uh, once we've got this up and running, of course, there's many things we can do with this inside Home Assistant. Uh, the bet that the you know the most satisfying one, if you like, is uh, using it for a dashboard or something like that. So each room you could have a view of each room plus all the automations and. Uh, switches and you know temperature and humidity for the room and all that sort of stuff um, in here as well if you click on the camera you get you just get a bigger kind of pop-out version of the camera here as well we can close that so that's that up and running really um, some things that you you can't do with home assistant that you can do in the app is this camera has pan and tilt function um, you need the app to control that. You can't do that in Home Assistant, or at least I've not delved into how you do that in Home Assistant. But I might have a look at if that is possible, and that'll be a video in the future. And there you have it. So for those of you who are asking, uh, the answer is yes, you can set this uh, little 
Tapo TP-Link Z200 camera up in Home Assistant and you can see the live feed for it in there. Um, got to admit I'm still very impressed with this little camera especially for the price point um, and again hats off to TP-Link for being so open about how you can integrate their device within third-party apps. Um, so if you have found this video helpful or entertaining at all, uh, please do go ahead and uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you like this sort of video, I've got a bit of a playlist of Home Assistant videos at the moment and hopefully I'll be adding to those quite soon. And thanks for watching.